check out how we use APRS at the air show. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. You guys all know that I'm a huge advocate of APRS. So let's take a look at how we utilized APRS this past weekend at the air show. But before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit about the operation. So our club helps support the air show. We divide that up into two groups. You've got west side operations and you've got the east side operations. West side operations is primarily uh, handling security on the west side of the airport. So they're limiting traffic in and out of certain gates based on the credentials that each group has. I worked on the west side and our primary responsibility was transportation. So we were assigned four golf carts to help transport elderly and handicapped people to the correct location at the show. There's various uh, seating arrangements. So you've got the general area, you've got VIPs, you've got flight line club, and we had to figure out exactly where all of those folks needed to be and get them to the correct space. Now for voice communications, we had three different frequencies primarily. We had one for east side operations that was simplex. We had one for west side that was simplex. And then we had a portable repeater that the west side guys set up so that east and west could easily talk to one another. Uh, we might could have made that happen on simplex, uh, at least between the two uh, net control stations. But it would have been kind of difficult to do that with two HTs and short rubber ducks. So that's where the portable repeater came into play. One other thing to note here is both myself and the West Side Net Control both had Starlink running. There was over 12,000 tickets that were sold to this event just for Saturday. So we knew that there was a good possibility that we would run into network saturation on the cell phone towers. And in fact, I heard reports of that happening. However, Starlink proved to be a real winner and allowed us good uh, communication with the internet without having to rely on cell phone data plans and potentially running into network saturation issues. Now, when it comes to APRS, we used both tracking on each of the individual golf carts that were uh, being used for the transportation, and we created a truckload of objects. In fact, it was 27 different objects that we created just for the show. Now, the west side was a little easier to map out. Uh, basically, all of those stations over there, all of their checkpoints were at crossroads on a map, so they were easy to identify, and I was able to go ahead and mark those APRS objects several days prior to the show. However, our side was a bit more challenging because it's basically uh, all of the vendors and the seating is all set up on a big concrete pad or asphalt pad rather. So there was no reference point to where everything was exactly located. And we wanted to make sure we had precise locations of each of those individual spots that would give us good reference as to where each cart was located as the show went on. So what we did on Friday, Friday is a practice day for the uh, guys that are participating in the air show. They do bring in some VIPs and things like that, but primarily it's just a practice day. So we got there at 9.30 in the morning on the practice day, and one of our operators, KD4EYF, grabbed one of the golf carts and literally drove around to each of the spots that we wanted to map out. He had an APRS radio with him, so when he would get to one of those particular points, 
he would send out a new beacon and he would do that manually so we knew we had the exact location he was at at that point. Now I already had an APRS station running in the RV and uh, I was seeing his beacons show up on Yak. So once he had sent out that beacon, he would go ahead and give me a call over the voice frequency tell me exactly where he was located, and then I would create a new APRS object right there where he was. So now we knew we had everything mapped out on the east side, and this was the easiest way we could figure out to make sure that we had precise locations. So after that was done, then Friday afternoon, I exported all of those objects from Yak, and that made it easy to re-import them into Yak Saturday and Sunday. Now, let's take a quick look at the setup that I was running during the show inside the RV. Over on the right-hand side where the uh, stove and sink are, it's just kind of extra stuff. I do have a VX6 monitoring the local weather frequency. This radio here, the D75, is monitoring the portable repeater. And then I've got the D74 sitting back there that I can grab if I want to leave the RV and still remain in connection with everybody else. Now, on the TV up here, you will see what is uh, coming from my laptop. So this is just a mirror of the current laptop screen. And what I've got going, uh, hopefully we can see this without too much glare, we're tracking five different individual stations. So right here, KW4. DTW-7. You can't read some of these others. They bleed off of this particular monitor, but uh, this one here is KD4EYF, uh, KO4FIT, and five different stations that I can track at one time. All right, flipping you guys around, what we've got here at my desk is one of the show radios. This allows us to monitor the EMS and the security lines. This is the exact same thing you saw on the TV uh, back behind us. Now, I do have some other uh, applications running on different screens, including weather radar. Laying over here to the right of it is the Redivus RA89, and this is my primary radio. I do have it connected with USB-C in the back, so I don't have to worry about charging the battery. You see the power distribution box back there, and we've got the antennas up uh, on the back of the RV roughly at 27-ish, uh, 28-ish feet. Then right behind the laptop is the 705, and that's what's driving all of the APRS. Now, we're all pretty close together here, so we don't need a whole lot of power. Uh, 5 watts, 10 watts is more than enough, especially when the antenna is up 25 feet. It's more than enough to cover the entire airport area. And I almost forgot, we also have the Meshtastic node running over here in the corner. This is the Trekker Delta by Spec 5. This thing has been doing really, really good here. Now, Meshtastic didn't really come into play. Uh, it was just something that I was kind of experimenting with. I did want to have that node available to me, but we really didn't utilize it with one exception. I did send out a message in the Longfast chat room on Saturday as the rain was threatening uh, the airfield. So I just sent out a message that said uh, rain coming to the air show in 20 to 30 minutes. And I actually received two thank yous in the long fast chat. So I thought that was pretty cool uh, when I wasn't even expecting anyone else to really be paying attention attention to Meshtastic. But I thought that was pretty neat and uh, Meshtastic is something we definitely want to start exploring more for these type of operations in the future. In fact, several of the guys at the club got a chance to take a look at that and see how it could be beneficial in the future. Only one of our other club members actually brought a mesh node to the air show and we did a couple of tests in that and had good communications even with just two small handheld units. So as the show went on, I was able to see where every single cart was located at any given point, and I think that APRS really added value, at least for us, in knowing where everything was located as the show progressed. So now you know how we used APRS at the air show. If you found today's information educational, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.